Good morning to you. This is Angela with Park Rose Permaculture. First thing in the morning, my kids are all still asleep. There are chickadees and dark-eyed juncos and sparrows and hummingbirds all singing. Oh, and robins, lots and lots of American robins. The occasional rooster crowing from my neighbor's property. I'm out here to work on tying up my male hardy kiwi, which is supposed to be going up and over the top of my woodshed. And you can see here, wind and rain and everything has, has flopped it down. So I've pruned it and now I need to tie it back up. Because it's a male and I only need the blossoms off of it to pollinate my female on the other side, it can be up here where I can't reach. That's fine. I want to keep the female tied lower so I can harvest the fruit from the ground before the daggone squirrels get to it. But the male can go up and over and cover the top of this woodshed. That's the, the hope. I'm also standing next to my Bavay's Green Gauge Plum. Before I talk about the main plant I want to focus on today, I wanted to share with you all this tree. So Bavay's Green Gauge is, in my opinion, a superior dessert plum. There we go, having trouble focusing this morning. It is a green gauge plum with kind of a brownish blush to it. It is an ugly little plum. The flavor is superb. Now, one of the reasons this is not commonly grown is because the commercial variety um, varieties that are out there are prettier and have more appeal. And the other reason is because this tree tends to set very lightly. It tends to flower lightly and fruit lightly. And the reason I wanted to show you this before we get into the main part of the video is just look at all of these blossoms on this tree this year. I have never had so many blossoms, so that is all potential fruit. We are in for a hard freeze tonight, uh, tomorrow night, so I have my fingers crossed. But goodness, there is so much potential in this tree right now. I'm really, really looking forward to a good fruit set off of this. So the plant I want to talk about is also growing on my woodshed, intertwined with my hardy kiwis. And folks have asked if I'll do a hardy kiwi video. Absolutely, I love my hardy kiwis. I will do it later when the plants are flowering. But first let's talk about this plant here. This is Akibia quinata, the five leaf Akibia. Obviously called five leaf Akibia because it has five leaves per cluster. Now, this plant here is growing up and around from the main plant behind my shed. So I put it in along my fence behind my shed because I want it to go up and over the back of the shed and obscure it so my neighbors have something pretty to look at. Akibia is native to Asia. So before I get into the growth habit and benefits of this plant, if you live in the Southern United States, this may be on an invasives list for you and it may be illegal to grow it where you are. I have found it, it sets edible fruit, but it doesn't um, proliferate by seed where I am. The potential is um, tip rooting and layering. So where it touches the ground, like many vines, if it touches the ground, it can develop new roots there and it spreads vegetatively. So just be aware of that. So I grew this initially on the back of my fence and I started wrapping it around last fall. And my hope is to grow it up and over across the front of the woodshed and have it draping down this way because it's just a gorgeous plant. And the reason I'm able to do that is like many vines, Akibia can grow more than 40 feet long. So one plant can go across the back of the shed, around the side and down the front, all one plant. Now, this plant is just starting to bud out and bloom. So let me climb into the woodshed here and show you some of the blooms that are coming out and I'll talk about the growth habit. All right, I'm back under in the back of the woodshed. I hope that this vine will spread across the back here. You can see our woodshed is made mostly with pallets. So it'd be nice to cover it up with some beautiful green vegetation. Akibia is called chocolate vine because the flowers have a chocolatey aroma. They are purple. You can also buy, buy pink and white cultivars. You can see the blossoms darken as they age. Here's the buds. The flowers are quite small and delicate and bob in the breeze. However, 
I'm gonna back up out of the woodshed here. The plant is extremely tough, however. So even though it has these little delicate buds and blossoms, it's very, very, very hardy. Here's some more. They start out pale green, get a pink blush, and as they open, they turn right, Now I'm standing behind the shed. I am entwined with my female hardy kiwi here. And behind it is the main body of my one akibia vine. So again, my goal is to fill in this space so my neighbors have pretty chocolate scented purple blossoms to look at. Akebia can get um, these kind of dead, dead bits going on with it. You can prune the heck out of this and it will bounce right back. So you can prune back the green material right when it's done blooming is the best time. And you can prune back all of the dead material. I find it provides a good support for itself. And I don't mind the look of it, um, especially because it makes these little curly cubits. I think it, it's, it provides visual interest. So here you can see it obviously is behaving like a vine. It's stretching out. I'm gonna push it up onto the roof of the shed. So the five leaf akebia, if you grow it in full shade like this, this gets morning sun because it's reached up. But if you grow it in an, in an area that mostly gets shade, be aware in the Pacific Northwest, it can get powdery mildew. That is the one and only problem I have found that this plant has. It will handle clay soil, poor soil. Many vines are pioneer species and they really do very well in poor soil. Let's see if I can get in back here behind my kiwi. See what I mean about the curly Q? There we go. See what I mean about the curly Q bits? I think they're quite attractive. So just be aware if you're growing this plant, it may need a spray of diluted uh, milk or other treatments for powdery mildew. And you also want to avoid watering the leaves, water at the base. I have found it doesn't need water unless it is extremely dry for long periods of time, and then it does need a good drink. Now, let me go show you a different akebia. Okay, now we're standing at the entrance to my woodland shade garden. There is Oxalis oregana on the ground. This is a Caria japonica cutting I'm rooting. Often root cuttings back in this area because it's shady and protected. And here we see a rain barrel that's gonna, gonna be a rain barrel. And my air conditioner, and I am growing this vine in front to obscure this unpleasant sight. I know I'm gonna get critical comments because I always get them if I mention my children or the fact that I drive a minivan. Folks will say, how can you do permaculture and have an air conditioner? It was here when we bought the house. I use it for less than two weeks of the year. Also, I have to do permaculture in the real world. So um, that's the real world right now. My house is not designed for passive solar um, optimal environmental conditions in the summer and my children have to sleep upstairs. Okay, so Akebia trifoliata has three leaves unlike the Akebia quinata with five leaves and the leaves have a slight serration to them. It also looks very delicate but it is tough as nails. Obviously this is full shade and it is doing really well. My hope is it will grow up and over the top here of the pallet wood gate and obscure this and make it lovely and covered with vines and flowers and then it will cover along here now again this also will get 40 feet long so I need to be really careful it doesn't clamor up the side of my house where I don't want it I can prune it you can see these are the new fresh shoots they can really shoot up I can prune those back if I want to. I can let them go. I can wrap them around the fence. Basically pruning for this plant, as long as you prune right after it flowers, you can't go wrong. Just hack it back. It's much like a Clematis Montana. Cut it back and it will be very, very happy. So the blossoms on this also come in a range of colors. The growing conditions are not significantly different. So all the same issues of Kibia trifoliata um, has a kibia quinata will also have and this one you can see it's young so it doesn't have a ton of blossoms yet you can see this one is a much darker chocolatey color and it also 
It also has an aroma. I don't find this one is as strong as my Kibia Conata. Those dark chocolatey blossoms start out more of a pale purple and do change color as they age. But again, you can get this in a whole range of colors. It's just about finding the cultivars. This is a plant that is um, starting to be developed into more and more and more colors. All right, back to the five leaf Akibia here. Again, you can see no serration on the leaves. When growing this plant, know that it does have an edible fruit. I have found it is pitched in permaculture groups as a delicious fruit. It's kind of a novelty fruit, doesn't set fruit heavily. The fruit are very large. I'll insert a picture here. The fruit are very large. I think they're nothing to write home about actually because this hasn't been cultivated as a food crop. It hasn't really had the flavor profile improved. It's mostly been treated as a landscape plant. So what you're seeing is an increase in the number of colors of cultivars. So if you're gonna plant this plant, you can go for full shade, full sun. Just remember to prune it after it flowers if you want to prune it. Remember that it does tip root and layer, so be careful where it touches the ground. It can get 40 feet tall. And the only problem I have found with it is powdery mildew. Now you may find these very large fruit on it in the fall, or you may not. Some folks were um, report here in the Pacific North Northwest that they don't fruit very well. So consider this a plant for shade, for purposes of where you need a vine to provide shade, to provide a nectary plant where um, the blooms are very attractive. But I wouldn't count on it as a food crop. All right, well, I need to get on with my chores for the morning, so I hope that was helpful. Akibia quinata and Akibia trifoliata. The five leaf and three leaf Akibia, a beautiful, beautiful chocolate scented vine with delicate flowers and a really tough growth habit.